Hi guys, my name's Oliver Wilson. I was a stunt double for Samuel Jackson in the three movies that he's in. If you do want to find out the latest news from Comic Con, please subscribe below. I've had the pleasure in going last year to Copenhagen, working alongside a, a Copenhagen director and writer for the new movie called Shrouded in Destiny, where I play a Wookiee pirate. I have a very powerful arm. <laughs> I have a very powerful arm and I'm not quite a nice guy. But also they said to me, as they were very honored that I said yes to the film, because I was inside the Wookiee, they then decided to create a new character for me, a family of Darth Maul, which is called a Zabarak. This is not on social media, but yet my Wookiee pirate character is, so you can see images of him, but you won't be able to see images of the other character. Now, what I say to you guys, if anyone's filming today and, and filmed any of what you see today, please share it on social media. But also I say to you, when you see this new, this new Star Wars base, it's a, it's a Star Wars base film fan, which will be out in Netflix or Disney either at the end of this year or early next year. It's going to be amazing. Some of the fight sequences and the actions and the romance and the soft moments and everything that's been put together in this movie is truly amazing. And there was about 17 stunt people on this. Everything that we did, some people did some takes. One. One. One take. I've got goosebumps. <laughs> and also, I must say, the stunt director, he was a lovely guy. He had a bit of a German accent, but he, 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 was, he was funny. He said, I just want to tell you all, um, Oliver is our oldest stuntman. I'm 54. So I want you all to look after him. And what we want to do now, we're going to sit down and we're going to go through the different fight sequences and look at the stunts that we're going to do. The first stunt that they wanted me to do was to throw me off a something and then I ended up on something. I looked at that stunt. I looked at this 24-year-old Spanish kid. And he went, is there something wrong? I went, no, no, no. He goes, you don't, you don't want to do that? <laughs> I'll do that. I said, go right ahead. <laughs> <laughs> you have that. <laughs> so he took that one. Because I just thought, hey, you know what? Man, I'm too old for me to be thrown around like that. Do you, do you know when you say, sorry for interrupting, but do you know when you says, I went to, uh, and I did, uh, I fell onto, uh, uh, does that mean you can't say what it is that you're on? The computer says, correct. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, like I say, it's a wonderful, wonderful film. Please get behind it. Shrouded in Destiny. Like it. Mention my name. It'd be great. And hopefully, what I'm going to do too, if someone shares it so much, I may even see if I sneak you in on the red carpet. Wow. At a cinema near you. Tomorrow. Wow. Well, that Thank be cool. you. Well, that'd be cool, yeah? That would be really, really cool. If somebody from St. Albans Comic Con oh, were actually God. there, that would be amazing. Make sure you come dressed to impress and not to distress. <laughs> quite weird, it be quite funny if your character from like, as your Wookiee is your Wookiee type evil. Yeah, well, my, my character is, is quite evil, but yeah, it was so weird that when we were shooting in Copenhagen, the guy who wrote it, and he, I'm sure he won't mind me saying this, was that all the production team, lighting, riggers, everybody wanted to have a picture with the Wookiee. Uh, it got to the point where they had to send out a generic email asking people not to bring their kids and family on set to have a picture with me. But sometimes what would happen, it would interrupt filming for an hour because sometimes a kid would come in, I've taken the head off, relaxing, and I say, oh, hi, this is your kids? They say, yeah, it's my kids, they want to have a photo with you. I say, oh, hello, I'm, I'm the Wookiee, how are you? Oh, I'm fine. Would you like a picture with me? Yes. I'm going to put, the, I'm going to put the, the, head, the head on now. Is that okay? That's fine. I put the head on, they go, Aah! and then I stand up and I'm 10 foot, <laughs> and they start screaming even more. So we got to the point where the kids were coming on, 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 the, on the stage and on the set and we were just starting to upset so many people. When you do become a stunt double for someone, you have to take on so many of their similarities, which is incredible. Uh, and you have to literally become that person. And one, there was a certain scene in Star Wars where um, George Lucas said, are you ready? Okay, everyone, quiet on the floor, ready on camera, ready on lights, and action. 
and cut. Oliver. Oliver. Oliver, come over here. George, what's the matter? Oliver, come over here. So I, I came over to him and I thought, what's the matter with this guy? He said, Oliver, let me tell you something. The way you walk, Mr. Samuel doesn't walk like that. Mr. Samuel Jackson don't walk like that. He said, when you go back to the changing room, I want you to look at your shoes. He said, you'll find you walk with, on the side of your shoes, and your shoes will be worn out. You look in your, in your, in your changing rooms at your shoes. He said, you walk with a key bowl. He said, Mr. Samuel Earl walks with a platter. The reason you have this job is because of the continuity of the boots. Because the original stuntman, the boots, he didn't like the continuity of the boots, so he scrapped the first film, hence why I was in the movie, the three films. And he said, I want you to walk with a platter. Go over there, look at the monitor. When you understand the shot, and you know what you're doing, you come back and you see me, and we'll go for one. Do you understand me? I looked up at him and I went, yes, sir. <laughs> So I had to share that story with you because as I've shared that story so many times around the world on radio, TV, whatever, but I just think it's one of them lovely stories that you shouldn't really miss out on. Do you know when you are in costume, etc., obviously it's a lot, a lot of hours filming. Do you get much of a break? Do you get, you know, it's like... You, you, you know, it, it's like... It's it, it, it all depends. It depends on the schedule. It depends if they're behind. It depends on the sequels. Sometimes you may be shooting on three different cameras. Sometimes people might not realise you may be shooting on three different angles. Also, you might be shooting with a guy which... We, we have a camera which is called a steady cam, which is then put onto a guy's body. So he can run with the action shots, but the shots will still keep in frame. So it won't go out of vision. Also, what people don't realise, from, this, from this, where you're sitting to where I'm sitting, they may measure that shot for the movement shot. They may put someone in there to light that shot so they make sure they get that nice and moody. Everything that we do, the technical movement and, 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 and motion and caption and effort that's put into that one particular shot from there to there, there are two shots, it's, it's a lot. So we may shoot bang, 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 or an angle of just that one conversation. And then you, so when it's edited in, it doesn't look like much, but you, what you've got to think of, the time it's going to take to just have, hi, how are you? Yeah. Yes, That's my, that, might, that might take an hour. Depends on the movement and what we're doing. Also, if you're running on track, they have like a train track, so if you're doing a lot of fast movement and running movement, they might push the cameraman on, the, on like on a railway track. So they're pushing him fast whilst you're running, doing all your fight sequences and kicking. And also, then you've got another camera that may be shooting from two different side angles of that track movement, but they're shooting from waist up. <laughs> what was Samuel Held like? Did you ever meet him? Yeah, I have. But the thing is, for me, Samuel is a real cool, layback kind of guy. But when I, when I think of icons or I think of people who I've worked with in the industry, Samuel is an amazing character. But for me, I box, if people know who I am, I used to be a quite well-known professional boxer, very successful. So when I went on set and I got my call sheet, I always got all the autographs of all the, all the actors and the, and the producers and also the directors. So on all the Star Wars, from George Lucas to Christopher Lee, now some people might not be old enough to understand who Christopher Lee was in his early days yeah. as a vampire. Yeah. So for me, meeting Christopher <laughs> Lee, and believe you me, if you type in my name, Oliver Wilson and Star Wars, I've looked after the Who, Led Zeppelin, it's things, what I love about social media now, people can't just talk, start talking all this stuff. It's there. But for me, Christopher Lee was like, and I've never, ever, ever, doesn't matter, I've met a lot of famous people. Christopher Lee was like, wow. And then I actually told him the stories about the vampires and all that. He's probably heard them a million times. And he looked at me and he said, do you think that's a problem, dear boy? He said, think about when I used to work at Brave Film Studios filming Dracula. He said, and we'd finished a lot at the end of the evening and I've just bitten a lady in her neck and they've just called her taxi to take her home and she's in the first setup in the morning. So she had to keep that on for continuity. <laughs> See her husband. 
<laughs> Christopher Nolan won't do CGI. He'd rather you go out and do the tactical behavior of you doing the proper, like, kung fu, tactical, pulling and pushing each other. Now, don't forget, when in the filming of Batman Begins, we have 14 pounds of body armor on, 14 pounds plus gloves, plus uh, facial ninja mask. The sword, the actual sword from behind, you cannot take it out with your hand from here. You have to push it up and then take it out. And then we, you see us do what's known as the cartoon movement where we do the swerve movement and we take the, the sword around our body. That is so difficult with all that body armor. So you've got leather body armor with like your pecs and your, your six pack. <laughs> and then you've got that kung fu sort of judo kind of material under that, which is horrible. But also, as soon as the director said, and cut, because we had so many different people from all the different arts of, of kickboxing to you name them, everybody wanted to show off their arts and everyone wanted to do all these crazy stuff in between the takes. So that was even madder. And you came out of that, I did stone and a half after filming that. I lost a stone and a half. Yeah? And I'll tell you... I need to lose another little chocolate muffin. <laughs> I originally was with an agent and I got a phone call one uh, morning saying a car's coming to pick me up, be ready in an hour. So I started to get ready and uh, ha uh, half an hour later they rang back and said the car's still on its way but they don't want to do a casting. So I said, well, what's the point in sending the car? They said, well, the uh, hero uh, needs to get this in the bag and so does the director. So the car picks me up, I get to the George Lucas stage, thinking, how do I know this guy? George Lucas, I know it, how do I know him? <laughs> that silly thing called familiarity, and uh, then I realized as I went in and met the team, the production team, that I was gonna be on Star Wars and I was gonna be Samuel Jackson's stunt double. Now the most amazing thing about film and TV is that people don't realize the time scales it takes for the shots. So everything I did for Samuel Jackson, it was basically shot from shoulder length down on the reverse. So if you're looking at me and I'm doing the dialogue, then the dialogue's back on you, then the camera would be behind me, if that makes a lot more sense to you in that sense. So what you've got to realize is for the actors to stand there doing a reverse shot is gonna take a lot of their time. Hence also the stunts that we do are quite dangerous. Some of them we rehearse up to two weeks before actually then shooting it on real film. Also, what people don't realize about George Lucas, he's one of the most amazing guys when it comes to sh shooting a movie. What he does, after every four hours of shooting a movie, he will get a bike to come and pick up the movie that he shot for that four or five hours. Then he'll have it sent to London or wherever he needs to send it to. And that film is actually being edited and made as the film has been made with narration and music on top of it as it's been made. Most film people will shoot a movie a year later, two years later, then they decide the mo how to cut it, what the ending, what music, what to do. George does it there and then. It's an instant program for him. It's just like nothing you'll ever see in your life. Also, what people don't realize about Star Wars is a lot of CGI on there. So when we go into the, when we go into the big um, warehouse, everything we're working to is gaffer tape. <laughs> oh yeah, and we're like we're crazy. Oh, eye to camera, eye to, to to camera, eye to floor, and we're doing all these movements, and there's nothing there. <laughs> we did take our tablets before we left home, but <laughs> no, seriously, it's it's really the most bizarre thing ever. But in saying that, the one of the most amazing things to still think after 20 odd years of doing this movie, and I'm still here talking to you guys about it shows the core stability of this film and, and, and where it's progressed from. We definitely 100% want to see somebody from this com Comic Con on the red carpet. Well, event. I will make it happen with that the guys in Copenhagen or wherever we're going to have the, the, the first opening. I would talk because I'm good, very good friends with the director. So uh, share it, love it. S follow the trailers. There's some trailers out now, right now. There's stuff about the different characters out right now. Follow it. If you're a real true Star Wars fan, if you share it and like it. And also remember, this fan film has been funded by the general public around the world. And that says something. You've got Oscar winners. You've got 
Emmy Award winners, uh, um, Lars Nickerson, who plays my boss in the film. There's so many famous people behind this movie. And if you get behind this movie, you can be part of making history of a new Star Wars-based fan film that's never been done before, and we have done it. My name is Shelley Blonde, hello. And I am the original voice of Lara Croft for the Tomb Raider games. My name's Sam Coleman. Um, I played young Hodor in Game of Thrones. So my name's Ross Sandbridge, and I was very lucky to be the body double for Supreme Leader Snoke. It is my first Comic-Con, and it's, um, it's been fun.